Welcome to YouTube. This is part two of my Gears of War Lancer tutorial. So what I'm going to be showing you today is some of the things you're going to need for this build. You're going to need some super glue. You're going to need a file. You're going to need spot putty. You're going to need alcohol and some rags, which I don't have now. But basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to start off by cleaning the plastic model. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get soap and water. You're going to want to wash it down to get all of the grease, loose oil and whatever debris off of it. Then you're going to want to thoroughly dry it. Once it's dried completely, you're going to want to take your rubbing alcohol. You're going to take your paper towel. You're going to want to wet it. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to clean it. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna do that real quick. And I got the cheap alcohol, but you're probably better off with the 80% or 100% alcohol because it cleans more better and has a higher alcohol content. So what I'm doing now is just pouring a little bit of alcohol onto my rag, like so, which I can guess I can do it. So I'm just using that right there so you can see it. But I'm just putting a little piece on here gently. And the piece that we're going to clean on here is we're going to want to clean all these little cracks and crevices. Space, pay special attention to all these little cracks and crevices. Oh, I'm tongue tied tonight. <laughs> hey, closer attention to all the cracks and crevices. And then what we're going to want to do is. See this little piece right here with all the screw holes? We're gonna fill these. And we're, what we're gonna fill them with is with our glaze putty or spot putty. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna get rid of all these holes. Now, I could do this better, but the time, money, and expense, I can't justify it for videos nobody's gonna ever see. And I got a small YouTube channel with barely any subscribers. So, but on the off chance that this video does become, you know, get a lot of views and I get like maybe a thousand subscribers, I will build another one. With that being said, we're going to get into it. We're going to just clean it good like that and as you can see hopefully you can see this you're going to remove all of the grease and debris off of this thing and as i said before the dry brush on this is horrible it's just brushed silver and it looks like to me that this paint is most likely enamel paint well i know it's not an oil-based paint because i don't smell it or the way it looks, I'm pretty sure it's a, it's a um, enamel paint. And here's the one thing that you can do with this. I'm not going to do it with this one, but you can remove all the screw holes. And once the screw holes are all removed, this is in two pieces, obviously. And so what you're going to want to do then is you're going to want to take your little Dremel tool and you're going to want to cut out these little holes here. These are little ventilation holes for the barrel. On a real firearm, the function of these holes is to actually give it cooling. There's also a couple of little vents right here. I have no clue what that would do on the magazine. I'm assuming it's maybe it's cooling for the motor because like right here, this would be the motor that actually driven the, that would drive the chainsaw mechanism. This right here is be like electrical drive motor. It probably would be some type of superconductive magnet motor based on the fact it's supposed to be futuristic technology and all that kind of stuff. And it's kind of small to be like a regular old motor. I don't see how this thing could have enough torque to power, you know, a chainsaw unless it's like a superconductive magnet in the motor, then it would, would have enough power to do that. Once all this stuff here 
has been cut off if that's what you want to do with it. You would take a piece of PVC pipe and you would glue it in here. You would glue it in here and then you have to put like a piece of cardboard or something inside of here. Glue it to the cardboard, glue it on one and a half like a clamshell. Once that's done, when you screwed it back together, you could actually see the barrel in here. I'm not going to do that because as I say, I don't have any really a large base of subscribers. I can't justify the time and the cost to do that for a video nobody's going to ever see. One more thing you can do is you can actually cut this piece out with your Dremel tool to make a handle. And that would look pretty cool, but I'm not going to do that as well because that's a lot more time consuming. And it's also costly. The reason why you need a file is because when you look here on this, the fit of this is horrible. Here's the thing. The Gears of War Special Edition one that you get from GameStop is a $200 prop. With that being said, it looks like it's a $200 prop, meaning that all the stuff like this here has been cleaned up. And so what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to put glue on it and hold it together to get it to stick because the fit on this is horrible. It's okay that it's horrible because this is a Halloween prop. It was never intended to be a high quality prop. That's not what the intent of this was. However, we're going to make it into a fairly decent prop. And as I said, you can make it into a better one. It's going to be a little difficult to make it into the highest quality you could on the cheap meaning that to order to make this prop look like you need to you have to do a good little bit of reworking and what i mean by that is this magazine will have to be cut out you have to have you know take a lot of care of cutting around here in order to remove this magazine now the thing is I don't think you actually need to cut this part. I think what you just have to cut would be around here. That's what it looks like. This doesn't look like this part actually is meant to come out. It looks like it's just designed for this magazine to come right here, straight up into here. But if you just cut this out, it's going to leave like a little hollow cavity, which means you're going to have to come back and rebuild it, which, like, as I said before, that is a lot of work and time for a prop that nobody's really going to see for my channel. However, you might be a bigger YouTuber than I am and there might be a, a project you want to tackle. With that being said, what we're going to do is we're just going to take some glue and glue on certain spots. Like right here, we're going to get the glue. So let me get a little bit of glue. And we're just gonna run, hopefully this glue, there's some glue in here, I hope so. Uh, there we go. And don't worry if it's a little messy because we're gonna have to come back and sand this glue anyway. But what we're gonna just wanna do is we're gonna just wanna rub a little glue right there. Let's see if I can get the glue in here you might have to jam it in here. You might have to jam the glue in here. Like I just did. Now, once you get it in here good, you're going to squeeze it together like I did. See, all these little pieces like that, you're going to want to hold it. It's going to take a couple of seconds, I guess, for this to bond. It's going to get annoying. Stuff like this is like watching paint dry. But trust me, 
Yo, at the end of the day, your prop is gonna look so much better. And that's really the difference in the fitting between a cheap Halloween prop and a high quality prop. Now the scope on this is actually a beautiful scope. It's a lot of detail. It's just that the finish on here is horrible. But as I said before, it's okay because it was never intent on this being a high quality prop. So it's not the company's fault. This is, you know, what they deliver is probably, they probably went above whatever the contract they were fulfilling. So that's not an issue. Let me see here how much longer it's going to take for this glue to dry. As you look at it, you can see the glue has already begun to dry. Like here, it's already bonded pretty good. But this part of it here still needs some work. So I'm just holding it with my fingers. Applying gentle or moderate pressure to it so it will harden and make both sides bond really well. So one of the other things that you want to do is with your spot putty, you're gonna to wanna to fill all these little holes. As you can see, I've already put some putty in here. And this is just a simple process of applying the putty. I just use my finger, you can use a spreader or whatever you want. You're just gonna to have to be careful not to mess up the body lines. As you can see here, it's a little line right there. You may have to come back with your little X-Acto knife to cut it in, but just take your time. And this is gonna to have to dry for about a day or so, which means this is the end of part two. We're gonna let this dry for about a day or so, then we're gonna come back to it. Thank you for watching. Please remember to subscribe because I'm trying to build up my channel. Help me make better content. Let me know if you like this, if it just helps you. You know, leave a comment if you watch the video. Please, 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 at least look at it. Don't just click it and then click off because I have no idea what you think and no feedback if you don't engage with me. So let me know what you think about it. If you're going to build one, let me know. And yeah, show me. Anyway, I will see you later.